President Trump has severely criticized the various agreements reached between Iran and the Obama administration, as well as the United Nations, as being weak and ineffective. Instead of being thankful to the United States in these agreements, Iran is now feeling emboldened. As of today, we are officially putting Iran on notice. Thank you. All right. Joining us from Capitol Hill, Chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee. Very good to have you on board this morning. Um, oh, it's good to be with you. Thank you. Iran on notice. Uh, do you think that the timing and the preparation uh, was correct in terms of General Flynn's call out to Iran? Are you concerned at all? No, I happened to be in his office yesterday when he walked up to uh, deliver those remarks. I was over doing several things at the White House, and uh, I, I think this has been planned. And uh, look, the ballistic missile test that just occurred needs something to, to happen. They need to be put on notice, and hopefully actions will follow. But I don't think this is one of those things that uh, is a non sequitur in any way. I think it's been thought out, and I think they uh, have follow-on plans. So, the, yeah, this was something that, that there was some concern that this was a follow up to some of the run and gun uh, type uh, activity we saw oh, this past weekend where a couple of staffers went out on their own. Are, are you detecting uh, from what you saw yesterday that actually pr processes are put in place there uh, that would provide at least uh, some comfort to people on your committee? I definitely think there's been a process in place. Obviously, Rex Tillerson, uh, who was also over there yesterday at the same time I was there, was just sworn in. So there's no question uh, that, you know, he, he's just coming into office. But I, I do think they've thought this through. I think they have a plan. And to be honest, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I think what's happened, Joe, is they uh they've always thought the iran as i have the iran deal was a bad deal okay but i think what's happened is they've come into office they've had the ability now to see intelligence and they're probably even more upset about the lack of action uh, over the last six or seven months uh, based on them knowing now that that look, uh, you know, without being too pejorative, the former yeah. administration should have taken action, did not take action, and I think they're even more anxious to make sure that uh, that we push back against what Iran has been doing. That's good to hear that you, uh, and since you were in the room, um, can you yeah. confirm that European nations were considered in this process? Perhaps I, I don't, there were I don't conversations that sort of looked at the whole yeah. landscape yeah. so that we would yeah. get some buy in? Well, you know, I, I saw your program earlier this uh, this morning, and, and I will say this, the, the Iran sanctions that have gone in place initially have always been through U.S. leadership. We, we had differences. I had differences. Ben Cardin had differences with, uh, with the, the European approach to this Iran deal. They have commercial interests uh, that are different than ours, and we're more willing. I'm sorry, they're our friends. I'm going to meet with one of them today. but. They had, uh, they had a desire to do business with Iran that we didn't have, and so they were willing to overlook things. So I, I think it's appropriate for us to lead on pushing back. I do agree with Richard Haas earlier, and, and uh, I've got a letter going out today. We need to build uh, the international community support, but let's face it, we've been turning our head on ballistic missile testing, on conventional arms sales, on heavy water overages. Uh, we have, and we do need to push back. Iran will take advantage, and by the way, we need to have follow-on agreements. This agreement is uh, is not in our interest and in that after year seven or eight, they are able to develop a nuclear weapon legally. Even though there's some hortatory language on the front end that says they will not develop a, a nuclear weapon, we paved the way for that. So I, I actually applaud what is happening. I strongly applaud it. My guess is there's going to be bipartisan applause. And I think that, again, I do think this has been thought out much more fully. I think that what happened over the weekend was a was a wake up call. Uh, I saw Reince yesterday. I think that uh, it, I got to be honest, it feels together over there right now. And uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that uh, General Flynn did what he did yesterday. Mr. Chairman, it's Willie Geist. You said that we need to have some more pushback against Iran. What does that mean specifically? Are you talking about sanctions? Or is there a point for you, as the White House said in a briefing yesterday or an off the record briefing, uh, perhaps a military option should be on the table as well? 
Well, I think it's early, too early to, to talk about uh, military options. I do think, on the other hand, when they threaten uh, with uh, when they threaten us in other ways, let's move away from the nuclear agreement. When they have uh, their naval vessels threatening ours and doing things, that they need to they need to be aware that there's a new day, and we're not putting up with uh, uh, the things they've been doing in the region. I think we're I think you're going to see pushback not only against the violations on the nuclear agreement. I think you're going to be, as there should have been all along, push back against what they're doing in Yemen, what they're doing in Syria, what they're doing in other places. If I wrote an op-ed when this Iran deal unfortunately took place, stating that what worried me is it was going to become our de facto policy in the Middle East, and it has become that. And so I think what you're seeing is an administration coming in, understanding what Iran is, who they are, what they do, how nefarious they are. And I think you're going to see a, 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 a coordinated, multifaceted effort to push back against their nefar nefarious actions in the region. And, I, and I support that. I hear you, Chairman. Well, what is the pushback? What are we talking about here? I, I think you uh, I think you're going to see them uh, um, you let them uh, let them roll out uh, what they plan to do. Sanctions, for example, on the table. Again, I, I think I, I think you uh, you got Tillerson coming in. I know he's uh, very much on this. Um, let's. Uh, I hope certainly. I mean, I've got a letter going out today with others. I, I certainly hope, at a minimum, uh, we're looking at tougher sanctions on the nuclear issue, but also. <laughs> The other activities that are taking place in the region, I authored a bill last year to try to push the Obama administration in this direction. Um, I think you're going to see a coordinated effort, uh, uh, sanctions-wise and other, uh, in, in multiple ways uh, against Iran, as should be the case. Senator, what do you, th you see as the implications of the fact that in the last 24 hours, U.S. government officials have given detailed accounts of President Trump's co private conversations with two world leaders? and yeah. defense officials making the accusation that the mission that ended tragically in the loss of American life was ill, uh, Ill should not have been approved. Yeah, well, look, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, we've got a, a love my office uh, here. We leaks are unacceptable. Um, we all are able to talk vigorously about issues and then come out and, and be in a unified state. I, leaks out of the White House, uh, to me, are totally unacceptable and should never happen. Um, as it relates to the Yemen issue, uh, our report, what we understand to be the case, is that this mission was planned long ago. Uh, it started under the Obama administration. This was not some herky-jerky deal that occurred. It's very unfortunate uh, that an outstanding young man lost his life. I know President Trump was on his way over to Dover yesterday. Uh, I bumped into him and had a few words with him. I know he was, you know, obviously uh, hates to see any of our great men and women lose their life, but this is not something that was a herky-jerky deal. It's been planned for a while based on what we know about what occurred. All right, Senator Bob Corker, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Senator. Have you on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.